If you've ever tried to fly a kite, you know one thing is necessary for a successful flight, wind. Don't believe me? Try getting a kite in the air without it. We've all felt the wind on our face. You might have even struggled to stay on your feet during a very windy day. But how much have you really thought about wind? Wind is just the atmosphere that's around us all the time. What we're experiencing is that's moving. The atmosphere is the gases that comprise the air that we breathe in. So anytime the atmosphere is moving, that's what we experience as wind. Some days we have high pressure, and high pressure is associated with very light winds, but often sunny skies. Other days we have a storm moving through, an area of low pressure. Those would bring warm and cold fronts, change the temperature, and often have a lot more wind associated with them. So it really varies from day to day, depending on what kind of weather we have in the region. Yeah, collecting short-term wind allows you to see what kind of weather we're having today. If it's calm winds, you're probably having more sunny skies, clear conditions. If it's really breezy, there's a storm moving by, and you're gonna expect more cloudy conditions, maybe even rain, or a change in temperature with that wind. But collecting over longer term lets you to see something called climate. It allows you to see what's the predominant or the most common wind pattern that you'd have in a region. We expect a day to be a certain temperature based on what season it is, but some days in the summer are hotter than others, and some days in the winter are colder than others because of the direction of the wind. So meteorologists want to know, is the wind coming from the north? In the U.S., that would be a cold wind coming from Canada or from the Arctic. In the summer day, if the wind's coming from the south, we know temperatures are going to be a lot warmer than average because they're coming from places like Florida or Texas, where the climate is warmer, it's more humid, and we expect differences in weather because of that change in the wind direction. creating a push onto the kite surface that's allowing it to get lift and move higher up into the atmosphere to the sky. It's the same thing that you'd see with the pile of leaves rustling around on the ground or leaves blowing on a tree. These things are all the atmosphere in motion creating a little push that allows things to be lifted up above the surface or if they're attached to something, blow around in place. Learning that sure makes me grateful for wind. But how do meteorologists measure wind speed? They use a device called an anemometer. Try saying that three times fast. Can we turn these fans off now? You can build your own anemometer to measure wind speed where you live. We've provided a step-by-step -step video and guide to make it easier for you. Check it out after this video. Once you've made your anemometer, you can start collecting your own weather data. What might you learn? Is one time a day windier than another? What about months, seasons? Let's see some more ways wind affects us every day. That's how we used to do a lot of navigation is with the power of the wind, and we still do this today. It started with sailing, first of all. We built sailboats and used it to build ships and get across large bodies of water. Now we're realizing because of that renewable energy that exists in the movement of the atmosphere, we can use it to provide energy for us. So we can use that energy of the motion of the atmosphere and build a system called a turbine that would use like a propeller that would be blown around by the wind, just like a fan or a little windmill would do, and use that to create new energy um, by using that motion of the movement of that turbine to generate electricity. I think it's safe to say that wind plays a major role in our daily lives. And now that you have your own way to explore and analyze it, it's time to get out there and do it yourself.